Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to our 71st Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our panel discussion twice monthly to demonstrate that one of the best ways to learn is to listen to the opinions of others with an open mind. With that in mind, I'm going to begin today's program with a quote from James Carville. Carville said, Today, conservatives get all their information from conservative outlets and liberals get all their information from liberal outlets. And you can spend your whole life and never be challenged, never having to hear or to think about or confront viewpoints that are different from your own. Today's proliferation of information is actually a bad thing because people don't use it properly. They use it to become more insular instead of more engaged in the world. So if you are a liberal, you never have to look at, read, or consider a conservative thing for the rest of your life. You can visit Daily Cause or go to Talking Points Memo. You can watch Rachel Maddow. And if you're a conservative, you have all kinds of liberal free media to choose from. You can listen to Rush Limbaugh. You can surf townhall.com or redstate.com. You can watch Fox News until your heart's content. Instead of taking all this information and using it as a window on the entire world, a big part of the media exists in a large part to confirm your beliefs. People have figured out that there is a lot of money to be made by telling you that you were right in the first place. It makes both sides more dug in. Today, our panel is going to discuss how well presidential debates actually inform voters. And hopefully we're going to um, be able to uh, examine to some extent how the media in, is involved in swaying our opinion. But today's panel, beginning on my uh, left, is Jerry Ritzman, chairman of the board and partner of Ritzman Pharmacies. On his left is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist, and on his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher and member of the Wadsworth City Council. Jerry, in listening to presidential debates, we often hear statements from candidates about a variety of things that prove to be exaggerated, distorted, or just plain false. If a voter is trying to decide on which candidate to, to vote for, do the debates provide information that really helps? No. Okay, Ron. No, okay. <laughs> Uh, but but let, if, uh, since I have the, the floor uh, figuratively here, I just have a couple comments to make. One on your quote, a couple on your quotes, and then first of all, I, uh, an event of the past week really upset me, and that was at the death of uh, Antonin Scalia. And the first thing we heard, that I heard on the news reports was the controversy as to whether a Supreme Court justice should be nominated to take his place before the presidential election. No comment through the news media and possibly not through the political parties or the powers that be expressing uh, appreciation for him, something about his legacy or anything. The whole newscasts for the first couple days were the controversy of whether mm -hmm. that should mm -hmm. be. And to me, that's a symptom of the divisiveness and the rancor uh, between the parties. Mm -hmm. and. And, and here's a gentleman that served uh, his country and the citizens of it, and it was a real uh, astute student of the Constitution. And, and it took days before some of those comments began to come out, mm -hmm. expressing his appreciation and what his legacy might be. So. I, I, th that bothered me. That bothered me that, that we're at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, on your quote, John, and I'd have to agree with that quote, uh, and I take that uh, to me personally, because I find myself attracted to those um, those uh, op-ed uh, articles and so forth. Just this last weekend, I ran across the, about two or three of them, and and I literally highlighted them in yellow, the the, right. the uh, title of them, and took them to my neighbor and said, "Hey, you'll really like these." <laughs> and uh, I, I admit it. I, mm -hmm. I admit it. Uh -huh. And and I and I don't think that I'm probably the only individual to do that. So you know, that, not, that yeah. suggests to me, John, a topic that we might have here on Right and Left in the Future or a format we might have. We might uh, read one or two op-ed articles, scrub the author, scrub who they work for, and so forth, and see, do we agree or disagree with <laughs> that? And then, mm. then later, 
reveal who wrote it and hmm. see if we then back off and say, well, no, I don't agree because <laughs> that was some guy from the other side of the aisle. Yeah. Uh, we might, you know, if we could find that. Or give a quote by a senator or a congressman or a position by a senator or a congressman, deleting from where that person is and what party he or she is in and see if we agree hmm. with that position. What, you and mean we have to do homework? Well, <laughs> it sounds like Jerry has an assignment. Well, but I mean, and, and see if there would be things like that, hmm. and see if then after we reveal from what party this person is, if, if that mm -hmm. would color our opinion mm -hmm. on that. Okay, now back to your question. <laughs> you know, you. I, I have to be honest. I do not listen to the debates. Uh, I do look in the plain dealer and where they critique the debates or the positions placed in the debates, and they use one of Ron's favorite websites, Fact Checker. Fact Check. And it seems that in most instances, the facts, figures, and positions that are uh, put forth during debates, they're running fast and loose with the facts. They're partly correct. They are partial truths, mm -hmm. and they don't tell the whole truth, uh, which might uh, inform you. Um, the, uh, the, but I did listen almost by accident after it was the New Hampshire uh, primary. I, I listened to uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, talk after, the, after he had uh, 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 been awarded the, the victory there. And, uh, and I'm thinking that this is probably pretty much the, some of the same things that he says in the debates. And I listened to it for a while and was really depressed. Because if I listened to him and believed what he was saying, I'm thinking, we're living in a third world country. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the edge of, uh, of destitution. We have no health care. Uh, everybody's wage is substandard. Uh, and we're living in a developing nation, listening to him. And the only solution to that, of course, is have the government give it to you. Uh, that to me is, after a while, is depressing. Not to realize that we are in one of the most uh, materially wealthy countries uh, when we compare to, to every other country. So th those are my comments on, mm -hmm. on that. So I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a couple of observations about debates. I listened to the first couple early on. Haven't listened to any others until uh, till recently, and I heard the last ones. I, I watched the Democratic, and then I watched the Republican. A couple of observations on that. Uh, <clears throat> no, they don't inform you very well. Uh, you have to really, really dig further on your own, whether it's factcheck.org, which is my favorite, or, or any of the others <clears throat> that are out there, and to try to find out what's going on. Uh, talking about how the media involvement, I noticed particularly in the Republican debate that a uh, person would ask a question of one particular person and then you got 90 seconds and a couple of, and then go on to something else. Never any depth, never mm -hmm. any depth. Also, most of the questions seem to be asked to both either Trump or Cruz because they know they're going to get a fight on their hands. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, that's good, good, that's good theater. Yeah. <laughs> that's good theater. Uh, Casey's there a little bit, Ben Carson there a little bit, sort of mumbling off in the distance. Uh, not much. A lot more, a lot of incivility in the candidates, particularly Cruz and Trump, but others as well in, in that debate. Uh, a lot more civility in the Democratic debate. The two candidates didn't seem to be attacking each other personally. They certainly made legitimate attacks on each other's positions. But again, it's pretty superficial what they say there. And I, I for the life of me, really couldn't figure out in most cases, where they're coming from or where they think they're going to go. Uh, I did recently uh, find someone had posted on Facebook a, a listing of, of Sanders' uh, uh, proposals and how he proposes to pay for them and what they cost. So I, I kind of shared that. I'm going to print it out and look at it because just a quick glance, some of the numbers don't add up, number one. Number two, uh, there's no way he's going to get any of that money from the sources he says he is. Mm -hmm. you know. And the secondly is, how do either Clinton or, or Sanders figure they're going to be able to work with the Congress? Although several hundred of the uh, 400 or so uh, senators' representatives are up for re-election, so if the Democrats want to get out there and vote, maybe elect a few of those people, maybe get a Democratic Congress. 
which is probably just as bad as a Republican Congress, mm -hmm. particularly if there's a Republican president. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, it's uh, the debates I don't think inform you well enough. What they can give you, I think, a little bit of sense is personalities and characters of the debaters, of mm -hmm. the people. Uh, how do they respond to a question? Uh, are they volatile? Do they demonstrate any depth at all or any hint of knowledge on the particular subject? Is it, uh, is it foreign affairs? Is it economics? Is it uh, uh, race relations? Or, or what is it? Uh, the third thing is that uh, the media people aren't really asking some of the, we talked about this the last time, I believe, they aren't really asking the, some of the questions I'd like to hear. What's your stance on global warming? What's your stance on race relations? What's your stance on, on uh, heroin epidemic? Gay marriage, that sort of thing. No, it's not happening. No, it's you not. have to do your own work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patty, what do you think? Well, well, first of all, um, Jerry, you mentioned about no comments after Antonin Scalia's Correct. death. I believe President Obama spoke that evening. Is that right? Okay. Yes, he did, and it was you know the unfortunate part; it was not carried. Yeah, by most that. stations. Okay. I had to, yeah. I knew it was coming up and <clears throat> I, I hunted for it. So, I mean, that was at least some sort of civility Good. that we That's should good. expect in that good instance. That. As far as the debates uh, go, you know, first of all, we have to recognize they're not truly a debate. I no. mean, if you go to a true Absolutely. debate form, they're more, of, it, it's more of an interview type situation. Um, that I've seen, I have watched every single debate, debate from start to finish. Good for you. I should get an award for that. And, um, and I like to watch the, the coverage afterwards. The one thing I like about the debates is that when the moderators do so, they can push the candidates to come up with specific ideas. Now, not all are willing. Um, you know, one of the big things that they do in a debate is if they get a question, and they're trained to do this because they're prepped endlessly for these debates. If they are asked a question they don't want to answer, they'll give a very short, quick answer and say, but I'd like to talk about this as well. <laughs> so there's that pivot to another topic. Um, I think it's good if you then fact check what they say, because it's important to me yeah. if that candidate is bending yeah. the rules or bending the facts. And so it, it is important to go back and find out what's going on and what about what they have said. You know, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to listen to their stump speeches. Mm -hmm. And Ohio will not get the um, attention, I think it should, but we don't get the attention as before our primary, um, the way New Hampshire and South Carolina, Nevada, yeah. Iowa would do. You know, for example, right now we can vote as of Wednesday um, mm -hmm. for in the primary. I plan mm. to do it tomorrow. and. Mm. There's really no campaign running. So you, you do need to follow these. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, I, some of the news stations run um, focus groups after the debates. And you know it may only be 20 people, but supposedly they're independents. And they will, the moderator will ask them, how many of you, you were voting for this candidate prior to the debate? How many of you changed their mind? So they are having an influence on voters, right or wrong. They are having that influence. I think it's important that the moderators ask questions that are important. And you know, yes, it's a nice question to ask who are the two people you admire the most. But I'm not necessarily going to pick my candidate based upon who they admire, because that's going to be a safe answer. There's too many softball questions like that. I think that the moderators need to call out uh, lies, and I know some people don't agree with this, or let's say fudging on the truth. Candy Crowley did that and it cost her her, her career. Unfortunately, yeah. yes. But I, I think they should, I mean, to, you know, when they just let it go, it's like, okay, I know that's a lie, I know that's not true, I know you're fudging the numbers, but I'm going to let it go and then the American people are deceived. And there's ways to do it so that you know, you're not necessarily calling them a liar. Right. I mean, there was an instance in the last debate, um, the Republican debate, I believe it was um, Ted Cruz, and it was after Antonin Scalia's death, and he yeah. made the comment that it has been 80 years since a Supreme Court justice has been elected or, or put it, <clears throat> appointed 
uh, in the last year of a presidential uh, term. And th that's not true. Yeah. Uh, yeah there William have. They point a school here. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and she mentioned Kennedy. And he said, well, no, he was appointed in 87. He goes, no, he was approved in 88. And it was a deal where he was like appointed in December of 87, but he was actually appointed in mm -hmm. January or February of 88. Yeah, nominated in 87. Now, that, yes. Yeah, okay. And then, but then actually appointed then later. So just, you know, just to get the facts straight, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with that. I want to hear that. Unfortunately, the moderators have not been able to keep control of the debates. <laughs> and that is unfortunate. And I blame that on the candidates who feel that it is their mission in life to scream and yell um, at other candidates. I know I emailed you after one of the debates and asked your opinions, John. Then I asked her yours and you didn't respond. No, I didn't respond to you because it was going to be way too lengthy for an email. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of your he comments <laughs> was the fact that you felt that the one candidate was being a bully. Mm -hmm. And he was. Mm -hmm. However, people like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, do they have an effect? Yes. I mean, even like when I talked about the focus groups, you, all you have to do is look at the ratings. They see the, the performance of the candidate seems to affect their national ratings down the line, except for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes a difference. His supporters are very loyal, and they're going to vote for him no matter what. Uh, you look at the <coughs> supposed gaffe or the difficult time that Marco Rubio had in the one debate. Immediately following that debate, his numbers went down. Mm -hmm. So they are important. I think they do provide us information but as Jerry had started by saying, we have, actually your quote, you have to listen to both sides. Mm -hmm. You have to watch all of the debates, and then you have to Ugh. check up on the facts afterwards. Now mm -hmm. I will stop my long-winded speech. <laughs> <laughs> you have a point about uh, <clears throat> influencing voters. I'm thinking back on uh, uh, Kennedy Nixon. Oh, absolutely. You know. <laughs> The makeup artist. The makeup the biggest, artist did uh, did, did, did the trick there, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, it, it uh, certainly it has an effect, and that's why. Uh, and as Jerry says, you know, you you, in a way, you're willing to dupe yourself by mm -hmm. listening to only one thing. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you can get information. Just this week, I believe there were two two editorial op eds side by side. George Will and I think it was Ruth Marcus, opposite sides of the fence. I read both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you kind of have to do that. I like George yeah. Will a lot. I don't yeah. usually agree with him, but I like yeah. him a lot. Yeah. And I read him. Yeah. How do you feel <clears throat> about the response of an audience? I would prefer the audience not clap, cheer, oh. anything. Well, it was pretty interesting, at least in the Republican debate, to hear the, hear the responses there, the cheering and the, well, uh, Trump so was much booed. Booing, I would but, prefer yeah. there be no audience myself. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like an audience for a candidate to play to. I think people sometimes listen to how the audience responds yes. and thinks, oh, I should be responding this yeah. way because mm -hmm. they all mm -hmm. cheered. Yeah. I would rather make up my own mind, listen to their response, and, and I don't want them feeding off the audience, saying mm -hmm. things just to get the audience to cheer for them. Well, any performer feeds off the audience. I mean, that's part of the well, fun sure. of being in a live performance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to your comment about uh, Scalia, one of the things that, I, that struck me is that the people who admired him most for being a strict constructionist of the Constitution are so eager to ignore the Constitution for a year, or at least until next January. And I, I thought that was kind yeah. of interesting. How, how are they ignoring that, John? Just for my information's sake, because they're uh, not, they're uh, wanting, want, don't, they don't want the president to nominate anyone. Yeah. In a timely fashion, in, right. In, yes, uh, okay. in, in, which is putting the, I'm putting it aside. So there was a, there was a meme today on, on Facebook, a picture of a smiling Obama. It says, so you really want to delay so Bernie or Hillary can nominate me? You realize my specialty is constitutional <laughs> law. So, Boy, somebody is pushing to have uh, Sandra Day O'Connor nominated. I haven't seen that. She's 87 years old. And I, they explained the logic behind it, but I didn't quite get it. They mm, have to explain. I'm kind of old and dopey and they have to explain things twice to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I saw a short list of yeah. names. Uh. Yeah. Well, getting back to the debates, is one of the things that I've often wondered. I, I'm a very suspicious uh, person uh, when it comes to politics and networks and so forth. Uh, in the uh, debate that was put on by um, uh, public television with uh, 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 Judy Woodruff and... The one they just had. Yes. yes. And... Uh, oh, 
I can picture her, but I can't think of her name. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'll think of it in a minute. Um, the, the thing that struck me was earlier that day, uh, there was an article published uh, by um, Michelle Alexander, who wrote the book uh, 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 New Jim Crow in an Era of Mass Incarceration. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, uh, where she uh, spelled out in very livid or uh, complete detail uh, how the, uh, the Clintons had been involved in uh, uh, adding to the war on drugs. And it's something we've talked about here mm. before, where they added uh, a one strike and you're out component to the uh, th to the war on drugs. To where, if an individual is c convicted of a of a drug felony, um, they are no longer eligible for life for public housing, food stamps, uh, uh, welfare. Um, it, it essentially made it impossible for them to survive in the legal economy, uh, in which case they go back to uh, peddling the only, doing the only thing they know is peddle drugs. And, uh, and Michelle Alexander blamed Hillary and Bill Clinton very, very adamantly, uh, blamed them for having the biggest negative influence on the back, black community of any president in our history. Now, this article came out in support, and it was, she said essentially the same thing in her book. Um, you know, the day before the, de the debate, at least I would have expected uh, a question hmm. about it. There was none. Secondly, I would have expected uh, Bernie Sanders to bring it up, but he didn't. And I sat back and I wondered, was there some kind of a deal made here? Mm -hmm. Was the network, was the media trying to influence the outcome of this debate? And I ask myself that about a lot of the questions that are asked. Is the me are people in the media trying to influence the debate? Do you think that happens? Well, sure. Again, just the, the, uh, the whole concept of watching the Republican debate where they were sending so many of their questions to, to Cruz and, and, uh, and Trump, and I thought for the express purpose of getting the fight, getting them to argue. Mm -hmm. I think the media is, it's ratings, you know? <clears throat> I guess what I'm thinking You're about- You're more subtle about that. I think that's what's really influenced the, the overall outcome the, here. Uh, yes. And uh, I think that's uh, probably true. You know, would CNN or public television try to influence it toward the left and uh, mm -hmm. Fox toward the right? I mean, do you think they actually do that? I think they try very hard not to. I, I really do. Do you really? I, yeah, definitely. Well. Um, and, and watching all the debates, because you would think that, for example, the Fox News commentators would be much easier on the Republicans than, say, PBS, and than CNN or someone else. And I, I don't know that they were. Um, I Maybe subconsciously. Mm. You, you'll yeah. never convince Donald <coughs> Trump of that. Well, I'll, there's a lot of things I'll never convince Donald Trump yes. of. But <laughs> <laughs> well, just as we have a tendency to maybe to, to seek out to things to read yeah. that reinforce our position, they may, without yeah. knowing it, ask questions yeah. that would steer answers to, mm -hmm. to support their You know, I, I'm sure it's there. Opinion. I just don't yeah. think that, I think they, they try very hard not to because that's their credibility as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so sure sometimes about the credibility of the media. I mean, um, thinking back on people like Walter Cronkite, you know, they fact check themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. that's <laughs> now we have, have media admit, oh, well, I just kind of exaggerate that part of my past. I really mm -hmm. wasn't in that helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But uh, the uh, thing that bothers me. Uh, uh, about the debates is that it does present personalities. And uh, it caters to uh, a, what I think is a large swath of our voters in this country that vote on personality. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, when uh, you stick a microphone in somebody's face and say, do you have a candidate that you're voting? Oh, yes, I'm solidly behind so-and-so. Well, why? Well, I think he can do the job. He acts presidential. And I really, and I really <coughs> like him. Uh, but, uh, 
Well, I'd argue the personality is, is important in the, in, <coughs> in a respect that it, if it, it, it sometimes gives you a hint to character. Now, I don't think anybody's prepared for the job of president. I think you have to learn by doing, but I think, yeah, I think background is important. I think your, your view of the world is important. Your, your particular set of moral judgments is important because that's going to influence what your decisions are when you're under fire. And you learn that from the debate? You don't learn it from the debate, but you get a hint about it, I well, think. You, yes, yeah, and, and, I agree. And you, you delineated something there, Ron, the, the difference between personality and character. You know, well, and you can get a good picture <clears throat> of personality, possibly, but character no, would probably take uh, what you suggested a couple sessions ago, that we need to look at what their record is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. look, Look at, look at their record, how they vote on, what was their stance on things that, uh, that are in the public record of events or, or situations. And don't worry that they've flip-flopped, that they've changed no. their mind. It's a good thing to change your mind sometimes. Yeah, right. <laughs> One of the things uh, being involved in uh, Right and Left Incorporated, where we're all about the business of promoting civility in politics, it bothers me that the least civil uh, people running on the Republican side are leading in the polls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I, I know that in right and left, we are, as a 501c3, we are not permitted to endorse a candidate. But I will say I'm proud of our governor for the civility that he has shown. Uh, he is, uh, he has not engaged in any negative campaigning at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like that about him. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people, especially school teachers, don't like him at all. And for and why, why is that, by the way? Well, when he first uh, came into, uh, when he was first elected governor, the first thing he did was put through that bill that was basically going to break the unions. Mm -hmm. And I mean that just wrote, you know, hit a big red flag. However, and I, union president, that's how I felt about him at the time. If I had to select one of the Republican candidates, I can't say that, can I? But he would have been. My choice. You can say it, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree with that, Patty. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Well, and particularly his, uh, his stance on, on, on what he's done with Medicaid. I mean, yeah. that's... Well, you can vote for a Republican if you'd like. Well, not in the primary. Well, thank you very much.